Oh, look at my hair. We are live hey. from the 2019 New York International Auto Show. Get off my screen. There no, we okay. go. What are you oh, doing? No, not oh, you. Oh, not, not me. You. I thought, you know. This is Lance Lane. I'm Steve yes, Hammond from you Drive Time Productions and Test Drive Now. We are at day two of press preview days here at the Jacob Javits Convention Center in Manhattan. And day two is kind of like the calm day, the everybody's going home day. You get here early and you can really get up close and personal with the cars, hey? And so that's what I've been doing since about 8 o'clock this morning. Yesterday, all the hustle and bustle and all the press conferences that we attended from about 7 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. And we did private events and all kinds of fun. So it's always a great show. It's my favorite one. It's the one closest to my house. And I think it's probably the premier one in the United States for us for us <laughs> okay because when you talk to people from the west coast they and, say the um, la show is better so. yeah and uh i love this show and it's a nice time of the year the weather's been decent and then this is the last auto show of the season so to speak then the auto show season takes a break and then it kicks back up with los angeles in the fall so that is our little i need to get a selfie stick glance because my yes. arm is going to get Can we hire somebody to hold it for us to the, to the young fellow who requested that I stop by the Lincoln Pavilion earlier, I am here. We are in the Lincoln Pavilion. Yeah, now. this is Lincoln. This is beautiful. Yeah, so anyway, we thought we would just give you a little bit of a rundown from what we saw and maybe some uh, opinions. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Strong opinions, hot takes. That's what's very cool these days. So Steve, uh, what did you talk about this morning? Did you talk about the new Highlander at all? Well, what I did this morning was, and you can go back and watch the video, mm -hmm. is that I asked people what they wanted to see, and then I roamed around the show floor live with my camera, I'll, and then I'll tried to that. take them to the cars that they wanted to see. I will definitely watch it. But it was pretty early in the morning, so there weren't a ton of people. Yeah, and, and I couldn't find you. So I was wandering the floor aimlessly, and I couldn't find you. Oh, but that's man. good. I'm here now. Man, oh I'm man. Good. So anyway, yesterday we started off by seeing the 2020 Toyota Highlander. Yes. It's a little bit larger now. Mm -hmm. They have stretched the wheelbase to they afford did. the rear seat passengers a little more leg. Yes. The design of it was very similar to what it is now. Yeah. Nothing earth shattering there. Nothing like, oh my gosh, look at that. Right. It was right. just, it is what it is. Right. And then we saw the Yaris hatchback. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's going to be a big seller, I think, Steve. Yeah. Oh, the Yaris hatchback? Oh yeah. I think so. You know, unless they make the Yaris pick truck. See, my viewers don't understand your sarcasm, so <laughs> you better watch that stuff. My opinions my are not necessarily Lance's, by the way. <laughs> no, I, you know, Steve, I, I really think there's a dichotomy out there. I think there's a lot of people that are looking at big, big vehicles. And then there's people that are like the college kids and like the millennials and stuff that are looking at the smaller vehicles. Uh, so you may find at some point that may actually take off. I like the last Yaris hatchback. Yeah, me too. It was actually a fun little car to drive. Yeah, if is. you gave it a chance, it was actually pretty decent. Yeah, that was actually cool. Yeah, yeah. So that came out on the floor. It was interesting, but not, you know, nobody wow. It wasn't something screaming. Yeah, about. hey, look who it is. And then and then we're sitting behind. Come on right? over, guys. Come on, Come on over. over. So we're sitting behind the Lincoln Corsair right now. And this yes. Lincoln Corsair. The MKC placement is right there. Hey, look who it is, guys. Oh, come on over. Sit down. If you, on, you can sit, sit in. This is, uh, uh, this is Chris and Scott and Danny from the Limited Slip Blog. You may know them from their famous uh, blogging. My arm is, wow. Look, I actually fit everybody yeah. in. I will be in about you five minutes here. Look at my hair. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is the upstate New York uh, the auto show scene right here. This is the contingent we got. Yeah. yeah this what do we call ourselves? The 518. Yeah, we are the 518. 518, man. Yeah. Old and young. It pretty much goes in order of age right here, except Lance should switch places with me. There you go. So we were just talking about what we saw yesterday. We just jumped on. We're starting off with the uh, Highlander and the Yaris hatchback that we saw in the morning. Yeah, and, um, yeah, so we did a live earlier today where I took people around the show floor and actually took them to the cars they wanted to see. Yeah. Which was kind of fun, and we discussed cool. a little bit of that. So, yeah. So what do you guys have to add to this discussion? What was the favorite, Steve? Uh, well, so far, um, I was asked about a lot of things. A lot of people wanted to see the Sonata, so I took them over to that, and yeah. I gave them my opinions on the styling, which I thought looked better before I saw it live. I think the interior is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. definitely, definitely. Um, and then somebody wanted to see the Corsair, which I could not find this Lincoln Pavilion, so I felt bad. I kind of roamed around for a while. But then I took them over to the Mercedes Pavilion and showed them the GLS and the EQC and the, up, uh, and the updated GLC. Yep. Cool. So, uh, yeah, those were some of the things that those people asked for. Okay. 
And then I fell in love with the uh, Porsche 911 Speedster. I am not a Porsche guy per se. Yes. I find their designs to be so staid that I fall asleep half the time looking at them, and I am not concerned with the nuances of trying to figure out that 991.2 or blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't like that crap. <laughs> However, this Speedster model really, uh, really excited me. It was, it was the two-tone paint and the number. The Heritage Edition, yes. I went online last night. I know they're taking uh, orders starting May 7th. I'm all in. For a cool 275 I could find the pricing. I only ever heard that from you guys. Do you know yeah, that to be yeah, it's 275 plus 275. 12. Destination. Okay, well that's that's cents? very expensive. Yeah, it's not bad, man. It's not bad. That's very expensive. Yeah. But if we get enough of my YouTube viewers to maybe start a GoFundMe, I oh. could. I mean, they have until May seventh. I, I think right? all allocations are pretty much spoken for. Yeah, that's one thousand nine hundred and forty-eight. Is that what it is? Correct. Limited production. That's not. That's worldwide, not just you. Right. Right. So. Yeah. Scott's a Porsche expert. Yes. yes. Not really. <laughs> and he owns a very nice Porsche. I will not say what it is. No. Because he's a very private individual. But he owns a very, very rare, very expensive, very high performance Porsche. And he was hanging out with Jerry Seinfeld the other night. Yes, he was. At a private was event. Easter long. Jerry was there. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty cool. We were not there. We were hanging out with Pin and Farina and Pin their $2 million dollar supercar instead. The Batista. Yeah, the Batista. And we also were thinking about. Oh, is there's a wrestler Batista? And there's also oh. also Jose Batista, the oh. former Major League Baseball player. There's also the guy behind the coffee uh, place. He's a barista. I can't get you guys all in here, so you're going to have to just deal with me here. Uh, I'll trap on your feed there. What's up? That's the comments coming. Yeah, I know, and I missed it. You oh, missed it. Oh, we missed the comments. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so, Steve, sorry about that. Did you bring them by the Mazda, the Mazda booth? We did. We went over to the. We went and we looked at the CX-5 diesel. Yes. It finally came to market. Uh, probably about ten years too late. Uh, it, uh, increased towing capacity, but the MSRP of forty-one thousand dollars, and the and the and the uh, MPGs only go up to about thirty. Yeah, twenty-seven and twenty-eight or something that's like that. No. No. If you're interested in towing, I guess that's good that you can get a CX-5 that tows a little bit more. But I mean, is that really how many? What about the three? the first opportunity I've had to see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I didn't really look at that very closely. Yeah, um, Chris is talking yeah. about the three. The Mazda 3 uh, hatchback and mm -hmm. sedan. Yeah. Um, Hatchback's still ugly. Yeah, it does look ugly. Yeah. I agree with Sc uh, Chris, uh, Scott on that, but yeah. So, um, one of the things that I found really impressive was that Rivian electric yes. pickup truck. Also a vehicle that's not for sale yet, but that you can plunk down a $1,000 deposit and then some point next year it should go in production. A Lambo truck, that would be cool. They could do a Yaris with a pickup bed on it. There you go. A, a Yaris? A Yaris, I think you said Yaris. No. Oh, Yaris. Oh my Yaris. God, Yaris. I'm going Yaris. Well, it's funny, they actually did show a Yaris with a pickup bed on it yesterday and they actually asked people if they wanted us to, yeah. to make it. They were really, like, yeah. Well, if you think about it, Lambo. It was an April Fool's joke. It was an April Fool's joke. But now joke. they're actually thinking about doing it. That's Lambo kind of would go full circle, right? Think about it. If they went back to building a pickup truck, because they started with yeah. tractors, um, they went to cars, they had some trucks. I yes. think that'd be kind of cool. It would be really cool. Be really yeah. cool. See, I think the Urus is selling well. Yes. But they, they everywhere. It's sold out for the next 12 months. So the, the problem I have with it is it should have been an LMO2 replacement, but it's not. It's a Q8. So you wanted something more rugged and oh, less, yeah. oh, yeah, okay, I see. It should have been. So think about it. The first SUV they had was the Countach V12. Yep. Stick, crazy, like you could fill the tires for sand dunes and everything like yes. that. That's what it was meant for. Mm -hmm. It's a great car. This new one is an SUV. It's, it's just, all it is. It's yeah. It's it's really not it's based on the Volkswagen. Uh, Scott's kind of a platform. wet blanket with some of this stuff. <laughs> I love the Yaris and I want one really bad. Okay. We get the fire going it's, and he drops the wet blanket. It's ugly. <laughs> oh, it is not oh. ugly. <laughs> oh gosh, I want one of those things. Steve the has first a love way. affair with that oh, car. I do. Yeah, I do. The, Q8, like the, I, the Q8 better. The, I8. Ah, the Q8's got a great front end, and after that, it's like uh, it's another Audi. So every every time we worth mentioning the two big brands that aren't here this year. We yeah. did mention that. Somebody actually asked me to take them to the BMW stand earlier, and I was like, I can't take you there because it's not here. Yeah, Volvo. Yeah, Volvo, man. That's weird. I didn't see that one coming. No. Yeah, no. It's bracing for impact. These auto shows uh, have seen a decline not only in press <laughs> attendance, but uh, I'll get to your question in one second. But um, there's no food. There's no swag. It's, it's uh, you know, the auto manufacturers 
are now revealing a lot of their new product at private events outside of auto shows. And so the importance of these shows to the manufacturers is definitely not what it once was when I first started coming here to my first show in 1998. But somebody was just asking about the Blackwing V8. Now the CTS 6V yes. is again, already sold out. So if yes. you don't already have- yeah, They're, they're re-releasing. Well, if you, if, you go to their, if you go to the website right now, it says you're done, but- Again? Yeah, I was just there. No, I know, but I was reading something that they were the, the initial allocation. Yeah, they're sold, gonna build more. And then they do it again. Okay. But well, there, there's you're getting you're sure getting new wins. information here. Okay. But they also said that they might put it in the new CT5. Whoa. Whoa. That would be hot. The yeah. Blackwing V8 yeah. in that little CT5. Well, they, they have to. I mean, it, it, that's replaced. Well, they better the do something because Cadillac CTS. is like they're just floating out there. Think about it. This is their third series competitor, the yeah. CT5, yeah, right. and the M3 is still the performance benchmark right. of that segment. They're going to have to do And something. each time they come out with a new sedan, they're always proclaiming that it's going to be the, the new benchmark and in the segment. they get closer each time. They do. I think, right? I I think, think the, the interior on the CT5 is a big step forward yeah. in the ATS. But don't talk about that rear three-quarter window. Oh, that, oh. That, that little fake window in the back? Yes. Yeah, mm. well, that and just the... The little... You Someone. guys speak down there. It's bad. You're way far away from my yeah, microphone. Yeah, your wireless mics aren't working. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the uh, Cadillac uh, it brings up inter interesting discussions. We're sitting at the Lincoln Pavilion right yes. now, and if you were to ask right. me which uh, manufacturers on the upward trajectory, I would tell you it was Lincoln and yes. not Cadillac. Cadillac seemed to have mojo going for a while, and then it got kind of lost. Yeah. And now uh, Johan's gone, and who knows what's going on, and they're moving out of New York City. And Look at the CT, or the uh, XT6 versus the Aviator. Right, oh, of course. I, I mean, you, there's, there's no, there's right. no contest. The XT6 interior is extremely disappointing for a Cadillac. The it's, cabin it's is... It's a rebadged Acadia. Yeah, that's, all that's sad. Is. That is sad. And the big thing that I'm looking at this year is the badging, right? Jaguar has oh. gone to numbers. Yes. Cadillac yes. has gone to newton meter torque. Yes. Has Crazy. Yeah. We They're mentioned going, that earlier. What is Lincoln doing? They're going away from three letter names. Yes. And yes. going back Iconic to real names. Yeah. yeah right. names that make That's what Americans have known. Yes. Yes. The Europeans stick with their yeah. alphanumeric yeah. stuff and let the American companies do what they've always done, right. which so is the give them real names. names. Cadillac has to pick from. Right. They're going with the CT5. Yeah, I know. They're still stuck in that mindset that we had to be BMW and Audi and Mercedes. Mm -hmm. We want to be a part of their little group and we want to beat them at their own game. Look at your Cadillac. Go to your history. Do your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, I do like Do you agree? Ones. Do you agree? Come on. Great, yes. <laughs> out there. I do like the new Lincoln, so you know, they're promoting basically it's an escape from the world, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a place to relax, yes. it's luxury. And if you look at them and you look at the interior, it's exactly what they're saying. It's a place to escape. I do yeah, I like that about Lincoln. I'll take any of the SUVs, but they can keep the sedans. Yeah. I've always liked the styling of the MKC. The the Continental was a disappointment mm -hmm. by all means because they they, they wowed you with the concept car and but then now it, was, it has coach doors yeah yeah that's oh yeah i haven't been in that one yet that's true oh i didn't see but that they're on their way out right? yes I mean, yeah. their, their platform is being right. Retired. right right yeah go they should just go the way of land rover and just make only suvs because that's all that's going to sell for right the next 10 years anyway. yeah that's probably yeah. true and uh, i do like the fact though that lincoln is promoting that uh sense of um calm and serenity in their cabins because yeah. you no know, Driving isn't what it used to be. You're often in these situations where it's stressful and there's right. anxiety, and they do do a good job of putting you in that cocoon yes. mm -hmm. and kind of making you feel at ease with things. And uh, like like Matthew McConaughey, like yeah. high on weed, man. It's like you're gonna be so, you're gonna be so calm and relaxed. Well, and the other thing they pointed out yesterday when they were doing the reveal was that when you walk up to a Lincoln, it's all nice curves. There's nothing angular no. that makes the adrenaline flow, right? It's very calming when you look at the thing. It's Everything is curved. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's a piece of art. Yeah, really, really. Talking, talking about not beautiful things, though. Yes. The stable mate to Corsair, <laughs> which is the new Escape. Oh, it's, I took people yes. over that earlier. That, that is, is, is hideous. And the interior, it's, it's like, the did they spend any time thinking about changing anything? It's rental car. Interior. It's yeah. bad. Yeah. The yeah. new Escape is bad. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet you that compared thing gets refreshed to, in year two. Compared to this, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 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 I mean, what, you look at however much a, like, 
lease payment on this versus that for the extra probably seventy five dollars yeah exactly yeah. Take, it. take the link take the link do you guys know if corsair is available in black label or will it be i mean the m the mkc was, right yeah so, right mm -hmm. they're going to do all black label stuff yeah. right that's pretty cool i like the black label stuff. yeah i want fact, i want black that label. one down there a black label doesn't it with the quad on, exhaust on the plate frame no, no that's, the that's, that's the aviator yeah which one are you looking at oh down okay at yes that might be i don't know so if you're not familiar with black label it's lincoln's um it's lincoln's um yeah, premium, ultra premium, concierge yeah. service level. You get dinners and car washes and special interiors and Yankees tickets. I wish I tried to get Yankees <laughs> tickets last night. I couldn't get Audi to give me any. Ugh. So, um, I don't think I finished oh, what, my thought on Rivian. I wanted to get yeah, back to that because I am not big on new electric startups or. These companies that make all kinds of promise. I've seen all the promises for 20 years. I've seen how many of them follow through, which is zero. But I think this Rivian brand really has a chance here if they can bring that truck to market looking the way it does with the numbers that they are claiming. That is super impressive. Yes, it starts at 70 grand before the federal tax credit. An extended range one will probably cost 90 grand. But if they can start there and start to develop their SUVs and trucks and bring those numbers down, I mean, a pickup truck that can do zero to 60 in three seconds, 14 inches of lift, yeah, yeah, but spacious I mean, interior with a front. Right. Look at look at how much a regular pickup truck is anyway. A, a limited F-150 here. The average transaction anyway. price of a new half-ton pickup truck is almost fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, there's definitely going to be a market for that, and yeah. like I said, you can plunk down a thousand dollar deposit on a Rivian truck right now, and if they're built next year, they're going to start trickling out the highest level models first, and then go from there. So that's pretty cool. I wasn't impressed with the SUV though. No, the SUV, which is in concept form right now, still yeah. looks a little, uh, I don't know, less impressive. Less impressive. It looks like a modern take on an old Land Rover. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's Rover. very yeah. boxy. Very boxy. Very, very boxy. Like yeah. Yeah. Yes, the old Fenders, yeah. Defender's coming back, by the way. Oh, is it real? Oh, yes. With, uh, the Defender's coming. Yeah. To the U.S. And they had the number of plates on them, right? Yeah. On the three or four there. Mm -hmm. They were nice. Did we, did we talk about the new uh, SVR from Jag? No. No, we did not. No. Which one are you talking about? The, the Range Rover Polar SV autobiography there. Yeah. The one-year oh, the oh. one year only special. Yeah. Yeah. When you got that. The, 450 horsepower right VA right in yeah. The Velar. Yeah, yeah because with the velar before you could only get either the four cylinder or the supercharged six but now you can get v8 power in the velar yeah. very limited production of course yeah. and that then, is true and then the refreshed x e mm -hmm. gross we just were over there we just over that there. car has never done anything for me no. No. and they're not selling no and they just pulled the diesel model that's done they pulled the v6 too yeah that XC is dead on the vine, if you ask me. Yeah. Well, most sedans right now are. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. I mean, as nice as a lot of these SUVs have been, I you get a little numb after a while. Yeah, you do. It's, uh, but it's what people want. So. Well, I think when what sales. happened is, is you had the sedans that were getting better fuel economy, and then SUVs were not. But now that you're getting the unibodied SUVs with the same powertrains and the higher fuel efficiency, everybody's like, I don't need two cars. I can get one car that can yeah. do everything. And that's why you're seeing the death of the, the regular sedan as we now know it. But. Uh, so what about the, the, the nameplate of the of the last Hold on, years? we have a question oh, here. Have a question. Why haven't your Toyota Mazda and Honda jumped on board the EV ah. train? I'll tell you why Mazda. Mazda has no money, so they can't invest anything. They have no R and D dollars because they're a small little Japanese company that has. That's why they're bringing a diesel to market yeah. ten years after everybody yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what were the other ones? Toyota. Toyota. Um, and Honda. Toyota do, loves their hybrids. Not, well, Toyota has more on the market on hybrids. Right. right. Yeah. They've just refreshed with the new Highlander. Mm -hmm. You know, with that right. new all-wheel drive system. Right. Hybrid yeah. in it. Yeah, so Toyota, um, and they've got, obviously, in their California markets, you do hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Yes. Yeah. The Mirai and all that. Yeah, yes, but you're right. I think, I mean, obviously, they're going to have to go all electric at some point to prove, you know, they should. I mean, they were kind of at the pioneering stage of hybrid technology, which yeah. makes sense to take that next step. And what was yeah. it? Uh, Honda was the next? Yes. Yeah, Honda's another company that's like, 
they sell a lot of cars, but mm -hmm. they don't have a huge R&D budget. They're kind of out there on their own. They're not a part of a conglomerate that can, you know, bring their costs down on development like a Volkswagen group or something like that. So Honda's been big on hydrogen for years. Yeah, They've right. They continually chase the hydrogen. Right. Right. Which I think is a complete waste of time too. I mean, well, I mean the hydrogen infrastructure outside of California is literally yeah. non-existent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how relevant can you make those cars? without somebody forking over a ton of money to build up that right. infrastructure. And those hydrogen tanks that store the, the <laughs> are very expensive to produce. Yeah. yeah, they're very expensive. Um, okay, so what about Hyundai, the venue? We saw the Hyundai it's venue. New entry level SUV. Yeah, it yeah. slots actually below the Kona in it size. Does. Um, Not here today. Oh, it's, well, oh they, moved, they moved it off the stage. Yeah, I yeah. noticed that. It's gone. Yeah. And then the new Sonata, the 2020 which you can actually use your phone as the key. And yeah. Steve and I were I thought about BMW's yesterday. new 3 Series did that as well. How come they touted that as the first, do you know? Uh, Scott, you're an expert. I, all I know is that BMW's is like an app. and So there's some differentiation yeah. between what Hyundai can do? And, yeah. I, in the commercials, they show the woman at the, at the 3 yeah. Series pulling up to it and putting her phone up to the door handle. Oh. Yeah, no, that's... But I, you can put the, the phone, will unlock it but I don't think it'll actually start, start it. Anymore. I gotcha. Well, the other thing too about the venue, or the, excuse me, the Sada that Sonata. I thought was interesting is that uh, they copied BMW in that if you remember my five series review from a couple of years ago, I could actually pull that vehicle in and out of parking spaces with just my remote without being in the vehicle. And now that, that technology has trickled down to Sonata. That's pretty cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you don't need that stupid display key to do it with. Yeah, know. right, right, right. Yeah, the BMW system was definitely a little clumsy in the way that it worked, yeah. but it was it still cool. Is. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't changed it. You could definitely freak people yeah. out, though. I would go to these uh, parking lots <laughs> yeah, just to watch the reaction of people as I was standing <laughs> outside my car like... moving it with a remote control, you know? Yeah. That was cool. So the one car I haven't given enough time, it's brand new, is the new Nissan Versa. Um, I don't know what to say about it. I don't know if you've walked around. No, why don't you tell us? No, tell us about it. <laughs> it was unveiled at a uh, private uh, Fort Lauderdale <laughs> event at a music at festival, a music festival last, week. last week that we were not invited to. No, I wasn't. And uh, now here it is, and uh, it's on stage, but I... What about the Versa Note? I heard it's gone. Tell us more about that. <laughs> Did the hatchback not sell? <laughs> I, I don't know. I saw lots of them in the rental car fleet. But, uh, yeah, there's no more Note. Now, the Nissan Versa has long been called the cheapest new car in America. Does it still retain its low? I wonder if they still have that title or is it the accent it. now from London? Okay. <laughs> I think it is. The Nissan Versa, I haven't driven one in years, was <laughs> one of the worst vehicles I've ever sat in. It was a total third world country piece of garbage. They, they threw the Nismo bag at it. What? What? Do you, do you a, a, a Versa that? Nismo? No, they did not. <laughs> What are you talking Nismo? about? No, the Sentra. The Sentra. Oh, the Sentra. Yeah, yeah. No, there was no Versa Nismo. That I would mean, have been the, the an abomination of right home about either. Oh. The Versa V attack. <laughs> oh, so another car that, you know, not a lot of people are talking a lot about here because you can't get close to it is the Supra. I mean, yeah. it's there's still two on a of stand. them. Yeah. It's, it's on a stand. Yeah, it's You're not a prototype. Yeah, really? the GR. Yeah, the Gazoo ah, Racing that's Supra. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like the way it looks. I do too. So I can't bash it. I haven't. Yeah. It looks good to me. It has too many of fake vents. Yeah, you don't fake, like the fake vents. Fake, no. And you just walk through the yeah. show. You can count. Yeah. Look at the front of the new R8. Yeah. Is the fake view kind of like a clip-on tie? Doesn't really work the way it should. I think it's worse. Yeah, I think it's a cheap out styling element. Yeah. I think it's a, like a fake you mustache. Look the hood of the Stinger. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know the entire front end. Of the you brought up a good topic. Yes. Lance and I. Test drove the uh, Kia Stinger GT yeah, last yeah. year, and we we were very critical of the fact that it was very difficult to control in a performance manner as far as the drifting and stuff goes. That they would always show commercials. Yes. Well, what did they do? Damn it! They listened to us. They did. Listen and they to came us. out with a new GTS with a drift mode that is actually going to be able to help you control that car. And it's orange. And it's, it's orange. orange. Yeah. The, the color. color. Habanero, yeah, yeah, which was also the name of their concept SUV that was right next mm -hmm. to it, the Habanero concept. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny because that car was really, I thought, very tricky to drive in a, um, in yeah, a safe, Yeah, it would understeer going into manner. the corner, and then when you got on it, the turbos were kicking in and it would oversteer. Yep, it was so they listened to us, and now they fixed it. It's pretty cool. What we haven't talked about was the I-Pace. Okay. 
What we about, gotta drive that. What would you like man. to say? Well, it's an electric vehicle, right? It's up there with the uh, what's that E thing that your buddy Jared uh, that he's not gonna get. E-tron, Audi e-tron. No, oh, okay. Sorry, Jared. I was just throwing it, just messing with you there. Um, so, so this is the new line of um, electric SUVs, right? And um, the I Pace is actually a very nice vehicle, but not a lot of. Well, it's been here. out for a year now. I have not driven it yet. We were supposed to drive exactly. it at an event last year. We didn't get there. It's like, why aren't they promoting it more? But, uh, yeah, we, we'll have to get that on the schedule for sure. Yeah, I would like to see what that's all about. It's got 200-plus uh, miles of range. Yep. Um, now, it's funny. When I go home this week, uh, I'll actually be producing a video on Range Rover's first plug-in hybrid vehicle, uh, the Range Rover Sport, which is a 2020 model. It goes on sale this summer. But I had a, a production model. And uh, so we'll do that video. So yes, Jaguar and Land Rover are starting to dabble into yep. the plug and electric and so forth. Absolutely. Plugs and electric. Yep. Well, that was 26 minutes of fun. So we got four more minutes left. Where do we fit the ads in here? Oh, by the, yes. yeah. <laughs> so we're... You, you, got off, you got off road in the, uh, the new Jeep. Uh, oh, oh yeah. What were your first? That's a well, you, we, we went to Camp Jeep, which is outside yes. of the Javits Center Love here, that. which is a really cool little off roady course. You don't drive, you're only a passenger, but um, it does show you the capability of some of their vehicles. And so we were in the Gladiator for the first time, and it was really uh, very cool, actually. I, yes. I enjoyed that. It had all the capabilities of the Wrangler you guys were in. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit longer, so obviously the breakover angles and so forth are a little bit different. But, um, you know, so what? No, your key, it was going up higher oh, and higher, sorry. so I was just trying to keep on it, man. Ham is live on the web. Oh, Steve. <laughs> it was just because it had the detachable sway bars. Yeah, it had all the, the, it had the all canvas the top you could take up, off. It's up, I think, a half an inch, they said, or a little more than a half an inch of ground clearance versus the... Yeah, the right, yeah, yeah, from the Rubicon, yeah. Yes. They have the bigger tires. So yeah, it's right. It's also what? How many inches longer? Oh yeah. Well, and ours had a, uh, a tow hitch on it, so we had to watch out. We had to watch a tow somewhere. hitch. But it, it was really cool. You know, I, I can't wait to drive that off road up up back home as well. Yeah. So, what'd you guys think about that little camp jeep thing? I knew it was your first time. So. That was fun. I thought it was, it was fun, fun, right? Yeah. yeah. I think it, it shows you how much those those yes those trucks can handle. Right. So I think it's a great way. marketing tool for them because if you get the actual um, goers to go out there <laughs> next week and go on that thing. I can see people going, oh my gosh, the Jeeps can do this? Yeah. I, would, I want one of those. Well, right. most people are afraid to drive over a curb with their Jeeps, so right. yeah. um, never see off-road. Right. Let's go an apple right. picking, and they park at a dirt parking lot. <laughs> so, right. I mean, that's about all most Jeeps see. It's, it's a shame, really. No, it, it definitely shows some of the capabilities. <laughs> always think well yeah jeep yeah i think i can handle it really prove right 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 yeah the yeah for sure the speed bump at taco bell you know it's like <laughs> yeah i might get over it so uh I'd rather have the g wagon oh the yeah, g wagon yeah. yes the kardashians like those right yeah. they do say kardashians get 500 million more hits yeah right kardashian Ugh. so before my arm falls off here we are oh you got a question uh steve what was your uh, coolest car you saw greetings oh. from germany wow hey okay. all right if i could have any car that i saw here it would probably be the glickenhaus yes thank you uh it looks like a thank race you. car but it's got new york state plates and a registration and that's ridiculous that's a great car <laughs> if you so go glickenhaus, glickenhaus. what was it called uh, SGC. SGC. SCG 003. It's 003. Yeah, the SCG 003. Go look at that car. What an awesome car. It looks like it belongs on a racetrack, but you can, it's it's he street legal. It. He, it, it is a race car that can be, be driven. also yeah. driven on the track, and he does race in the Nürburgring. I mean, it's, it's got an F1, like, steering, you know, yeah. Yeah. system, yeah. right? I, mean, I, I think the blue carbon fiber is just stunning. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And did it's you amazing. see the gauges on the outside for fuel and everything? Yeah, right? Scott, and you seem like you're an Can you? I don't even no, know. Can you not. buy this car? Yeah. Yeah, it's street legal. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's, he, has <laughs> a, he has a racing variant, yeah. and then he has a road going variant. Yeah. And he Who's has, is he, by the way? Sorry. Uh, Jim Glickenhaus. Glickenhaus. Yeah. Oh, it's Jim Glickenhaus himself? You don't know yes. him? I haven't met him. Oh, man. Jim, invite me over, man. Him, man. He just had his press conference as you were going live. Yeah. That was him? Yeah, he yes. was over there at the uh, Hypercar uh, CEO yeah. press conference. Yeah, he's over there. Man. Thanks for answering the question. He's sick of our answer at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Glickenhaus. Thank That's you. Nice. Um, but also they had a Konus eggs here, a couple of Konus eggs. Um, no Pagani this year. There's yes, it was. Where? The Chiron uh, no. Anniversary Edition Pagani. was over there. Pagani. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. That's okay. fine. That's all right. 
Yeah. <laughs> the new Bentley Continental is here, which is the first time I've seen it. Yes. Yes. It is just a stunning. Yeah, they really. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, the Nettle GT is here, and uh, they've got the Rolls-Royce Cullen here, which by now you've probably seen in places, maybe in real life. And then, yeah, although it's that Bentayga, I'll tell you that. That Bentayga is like that Bentayga. Oh, I don't like it. That car makes me want to vomit. Wow. That's a strong take right there. That's yeah. A piece of take. They're, they're all better looking than the Urus. Yes, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. No, no, no. I want my Urus. And if you, hey, <laughs> let's leave that one alone, man. Um, <laughs> I said keep your Urus. Urus to yourself. Urus. Uh, what a name. I'm sorry, man, but I just don't get the name. Um, how about the one you want to take your date out in, and that's the back mono? I mean, it's a single seat. What is that? A sports car? What? What is that? The BAC Mono? Yeah, the it's BAC a Mono. Focus RS motor, a carbon fiber tub with suspension bolted on. You'll need yes. a helmet yes. with a with a visor, or you'll have bugs in your Jeep. Yeah. Your Jeep can't come with you. You Dude, can't no go date. to the grocery store with it. It's um, completely. But if you're going to go out on a track day or an autocross day, or you want to, you know, it's crazy. Steve this and I sat there for about a half an hour trying to figure out how the rear suspension. Yeah, the suspension on, on that all, thing is crazy. Uh, it's all push rod. Yeah, I'll yeah. push rod. In, in board. In, yeah. yeah, they've got the transverse mounted strut. <laughs> yeah, it's par. Steve says it won't work. Yeah, I, I, I'm determined that that doesn't provide <laughs> any <laughs> isolation from the what's been building them for like point. five years. <laughs> <laughs> they've been around for a while. Yeah. This is their first time in the U.S. Well, that's why you're here, to give us insight on the supercar. I, I've wrecked a lot of them in my one video game. So I'm, I'm sure. I'm, yeah, they're hard to control, <laughs> yeah. man. They're hard to control. So we're uh, we're all going back north today in various vehicles and means. <laughs> I won't say what you're doing. Are you guys taking this bag, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. No. No, no? they're not. No. It's we're going back in an I-8 Roadster with luggage. So it's it's not, them, let's see if we can carry your luggage and beat you home. <laughs> oh. oh. And, well, well, and well. sound better, right? Is that what you're saying? And you know, sound? last know. night when you were banging on the uh, I-8 roads last night yeah. about its acceleration, you know the, the coupe can do 0 to 60 in 4.2, right? Yeah. Okay. Because you were naming some cars that were faster that aren't. You know that, right? I mean... You were naming some say, other cars that had 0 to 60. I didn't say 0 to 60. Yeah, you were kind of... Yeah, but you, yeah, but I know you. You were hinting at it. Fine. Okay. So, <laughs> find me a guy that's going to pull up next to the car that I was talking about Yeah. at a stoplight and yeah. actually do 0 to 60 in 4.2 that thing. I will. I'll okay. do it. Lance will do it today out of the parking garage. Yeah, turn okay. straight, man. It's right. going to be awesome. Yeah, we'll leave all kinds of carbon fire behind. <laughs> <laughs> happy Easter. Happy Good Friday. Happy Holy Thursday. This is us live. A limited slip blog. Uh, drive Time Productions. Test drive now from the Jake Javits Convention Center. Oh, yeah, our friend from oh. Germany is jealous that we're driving the IE. <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorite cars of all time. Yes, it's a real looker. Everybody loves that car. I see his head shaking down there. <laughs> so um, enjoy your holiday, everybody. We will see you at the next auto show, which will be in L.A. in November. And look for some of my new um, reviews coming up next week. I will be producing the 2020 Range Rover Sport PHEV. Mm -hmm. And the, what was the other one we just shot? We shot something. I don't know. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, I, the uh, 2019 Infinity Q60 uh, Red Sport Oh, yes. 400. That was fun, actually. Happy Easter.